Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And I'm starting a little series of Tuesday, like technical art chat videos, where we can talk about things like value and composition and sketching and different media and supplies and all the kind of the techie stuff. These are, I hope will be useful if like you've done a few tutorials and you're wanting to kind of take the next step. So if you're wanting to develop your own projects, uh, it'll help you think about things like colour and, you know, how to get things from an idea onto the page. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, today, I really wanted to do something inspired by like all the seeds and random things that you find on the ground in autumn. Uh, so where we are right now, you can't go outside without uh, finding acorns and conkers and all sorts of things. And I've been collecting them and uh, and bringing them home. So some of these have been in here for a few days and they're looking a little dried up, but they're still really interesting. Um, I've started sketching a few of them here in order to work out what I want to do with this project. I thought it'd be really useful uh, just to talk you through my process of getting from the inspiration to what I'm going to do for the project. Some artists are really good at taking something quite complex and then just kind of coming up with a simplified version of it. I'm not really that good at that so it takes me a little bit longer so there's a bit more of there's a few more steps in the process. I can't draw something without kind of having some kind of reference, frame of reference for the way that it works, the way that it functions. But once I've got that, I can do all sorts of things with it. So I thought I'd use one of these pine cones today and uh, talk you through that kind of my process. What I really want is like a nice simplified way of drawing or painting a pine cone. So I can't do it without looking at it. I'd end up with something really quite random. So I'm going to sketch this in a couple of different ways and that will help inform what I do with the uh, inspiration in the project and you can take it in different ways as well. So let's see. So I start out, I've just got a basic pencil and I'm going to do a little pencil sketch of it. So I'm going to be seeing this at a slightly different angle to you are, so it might look slightly different to me than it does to you. What I want to do is to just work out the big shape. So this is like it's kind of wide at the bottom, it gets narrow at the top, and I'm drawing this pretty much life-size, so I don't need to do any like size conversions. Okay, so that's giving me like a rough egg shape. That's a good start. And then how do I break this down into smaller pieces? There's so many it feels a little bit overwhelming. Sometimes you can break things down into smaller shapes, so there's like a line across here, so I could kind of put that line in there like that and then I know that everything below there is going to be in that space and then this one here looks fairly obvious there this little bit here so and maybe it needs to be a little higher up and I can use those as my like signposts and use them to judge whether I've got other things in the right place or not so let's angle that a little bit more and then I can start putting in, the really obvious bits to me are these, um, I don't know what they call them, like the lighter ends. So if I could put some of those in place, there's one just above that one. And then there's one here that's kind of almost right at the top. There's a little sticky bit out at the top. There's another one here. There's one to the right of that one there. And I'm sketching these things in lightly because if I get them in the wrong place, I can easily go back and change them. So that's this top bit done. And then there's a, like, there's a bit of a gap there before the next one down here. This one down here is slightly to the right of that. And then there's one, there's one just above it there. There's this one down here. There's one there, one there. That's slightly to below and to the right of that one. Or one there, and they are getting closer together 
as we get towards the bottom. So I need to fill in the sides now. So this one here is that one there. There's a one like behind it there. This one here is there. So there's a one there. I've got these two here. So there's a one there. And then there's one there. And then there's a few like behind that I can just see bits of. This one here is that one, so there's one just above it there, one sticking out the side. That, that one is there, and then there's one just below it. Uh, that one's there, there's one here, like that. And then these ones at the bottom are all almost touching, or they are touching. So it's almost like bricks in a wall or something. So yeah, and they just get smaller and closer together as we get towards the bottom. And then I can go back and I can put in the like the downward pieces. So from each one, I've got two lines heading in towards the centre. So there's a, like a core somewhere about here, and all of those lines are heading in that direction. So there's like this is the thing to aim for. Little X marks the spot. And then all of the lines are kind of heading towards that. So these ones are going out and then these ones will be going down. Not that you can see these ones because they're all too close together. So I've got a basic sketch now, and then I can add as much detail as I want on here. So I can see that there's like a, a little, almost like a cross shape on every one of these. Um, and that's bits lighter. And then it, it gets darker as it heads down into the pine cone. And it's slightly darker on the left, because I've got more light coming from the right. And each one of these has its own little markings on it. basic pine cone done I think and you can spend a long time doing this and you could do like a full-size pencil sketch if you wanted but that's enough to give me an idea of how this is constructed so what I can do now is use the knowledge that I've gained from doing this sketch and this drawing to then make simpler sketches what I can do is I can then make up other pine cones. Um, I can make them slightly different shapes and sizes. So I can do, let's do, let's make one here that's slightly kind of taller and thinner, like this. Uh, but now I know how it's constructed, I can say, okay, it's got these little kind of almost like kite shaped things in it. They 
have gaps between them. They'll be bigger in the centre because you're looking at it at the centre and then you'll see them smaller on the sides. They get further apart as you get to the top. And then the top ones are quite long and elongated. They are in this kind of diamond pattern where they're like in a diamond formation. So there's a top one and a bottom one and a left one and a right one, uh, kind of above and below each other. But then because they're, um, they're organic, organic little shapes, you don't have to be regular with them. And then when you get towards the bottom, they get closer together. And then they're all joined into the centre with little lines. So there we go, we've made up a pine cone. So let's do a small one here and I'm gonna do this one in pen. So I'm gonna do a nice small fat one there. I'm just doing the pencil mark for the outline of the shape. And I've got a fine liner pen and I'm going to do my nice like kite shape here, like that. That's the start one and then one on either side to the left and the right, above and below, and above and below here, and below here. And as they get further down, they get flatter and closer together. And yes, there'll be more going out to the side. So yeah, flatter and closer together as we get towards the bottom. until these ones at the bottom are all touching. And the ones at the top are taller and thinner. And then they're all joined into this center stem with little lines. And then I can scribble in darker areas. On the left hand side of each one of these. And fill in all of the space that I can see in the bottom because any space that would be in the bottom would be covered up. And then I could do 
little markings, at least on some of the bigger uh, little pinelets, to indicate some of those shapes on there. Maybe don't do the small ones. But now I've got a nice simplified, oh, let's fill that bit in, a nice simplified pine cone that I could make into a lino print, or I could just do it as a line drawing like this, or I could do line and wash. Um, so I could do one with a, a fine liner pen like this, um, and do it quite, it's not neat exactly, but the lines are quite defined. Um, or I could do one like this over here. So this is a Hawthorne one, and I did this with a very scribbly loose pen. In fact, I think I might try that with the pine cone and see if that works as well. So I'm just going to change my pen. I'll get a slightly smaller one um, so I can scribble with it a bit more. And I'm going to do a scribbly version now. So let's see. So. Again, I'm going to take my pencil and give myself a nice pine coney outline shape. And then I'm going to do a scribbly version of this where I'm keeping my pen on the paper and not lifting it and moving it around. And essentially what I'm doing is drawing the shapes in between. And they're getting quite interesting here. But that's okay. And remember they get smaller and closer together as they get to the bottom. And oh I missed the top. Do some scribbly ones like this at the top. And then I'm going to scribble in between where all of the kind of light bits are to give myself some darks. So there we go. So this is looking like maybe it's less pine coney. It's maybe less obvious, but actually it's got a lot of movement, a lot of life to it. So I'm quite liking that. And it's nice and quick to draw. But if I just started here trying to draw something like this, I wouldn't have done very well. It, it wouldn't have been anywhere near looking like a pine cone. But because I started with a drawing that was referencing the real thing, then I was able to take it on in different directions and create uh, more, or le more or less simplified versions of it. So that's my process for simplifying uh, an item that I feel a little bit overwhelming when I first approach um, and I hope that it's been helpful for you. I'd really like to know like what ways you have of sketching things, how do you work with reference material and do you find some things easier or harder? So do you find a, a realistic uh, drawing easier or harder than a simplified illustrative one? Uh, because we're all different and we all approach these things very differently as well. So I hope that you've enjoyed that and uh, I look forward to seeing you again uh, in another video very soon. Um, the project that I'll be uh, creating from this, uh, from this sketching session is going to be up on Friday and I hope that you're going to enjoy doing that. So I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye bye.